This is CBN News Watch. And thank you so much for joining us. I'm from Graham. Hawaii is bracing for a major hurricane expected to hit land within the next 24 hours. Warnings are now posted for the most populated areas. And as CBN's Jenna Browder reports, U.S. Hawaii are preparing for the worst. Hurricane Lane is barreling toward the Hawaiian Islands, and at this point, people are preparing for the worst. I would be very, very happy to be able to say, well, it was another near miss, but that doesn't seem likely with the trajectory that's coming now. The storm is blowing 150 mile an hour winds, one of the strongest to ever come this close to the islands, though it may not actually hit landfall. We got to take it very, very seriously. And we're all working together at this point to make sure that we plan for the worst. Lane seen here from space is prompting warnings for the Big Island, Maui and Oahu. The U.S. Navy is moving its ships and submarines as islanders prepare for possible evacuations. All public schools are closed today and tomorrow, and forecasters are keeping a very close eye on this hurricane. As we head into Friday, at 2 p.m., that's when it tracks just south of Maui County. Red indicates those hurricane force winds. They could come on shore. Meantime, Islanders are stocking up on supplies, gas stations running out of fuel, and some stores selling out of basic supplies like water. Hurricane hunters flying into the eye of the storm put it best. It's no other way for the forecasters to see what exactly is inside the storm and what's going on until we get there. Jenna Browder, CBN News. Here now is a look at some of the other major headlines we're following for you today inside the CBN newsroom. Authorities in France say a man armed with a knife attacked passersby outside of Paris. Officials say two of the victims were killed and another was seriously injured. Police tweeted that the attacker had been neutralized and shot dead by police. ISIS has claimed responsibility for the attack in a posting on its news agency. The leader of ISIS has allegedly resurfaced for the first time in a year in a new audio recording that's been released. The 54-minute recording urges his followers to persevere and continue fighting enemies. His whereabouts and the question of whether he is dead or alive remains unsolved. The U.S. and China have increased tariffs on billions of dollars of each other's goods in a new tariff battle. That 25% penalties apply to $16 billion of imports from each side. China said on Thursday it will file a complaint against the United States with the World Trade Organization for its tariffs, claiming the U.S. violated rules. Now for more on these stories and others throughout the day, you can visit CBNNews.com. The confirmation hearing for President Trump's Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh is set to begin in just under two weeks on September 4th. But Democrats are hoping to stall that any way they can. Abigail Robertson brings us more on the Kavanaugh Showdown. By the end of this week, Judge Brett Kavanaugh will have met with more than half of the Senate, including minority leader Chuck Schumer. As many Democrats still refuse to meet with the Supreme Court nominee, now they want his hearings postponed, citing the connection between President Trump and the legal troubles of Paul Manafort and Michael Cohen. After Tuesday's courtroom outcomes, Hawaii Senator Maisie Hirono canceled her meeting with Judge Kavanaugh, while Schumer well, called for the, the hearing to be Kavanaugh's postponed record. altogether. At the very least, the very least, it is, seemly, it is unseemly for the President of the United States to be picking a Supreme Court justice who could soon be effectively a juror in a case involving the President himself. Somehow, An aide of Senate Judiciary leader, Committee Chairman Chuck Grassley's office told but CBN it. News this is just a delay tactic by opponents of Kavanaugh. Carrie Severino from the Judicial Crisis Network agrees. Right now, four of the sitting justices plus Justice Kennedy were appointed by presidents who at the time were under investigation for one thing or another. So the idea that that's something novel is, is, is really, um, you know, not fair. Also this week, Kavanaugh met with Republican Senator Susan Collins, a key swing vote, who called their meeting productive and informative. The pro-choice Collins appeared pleased on where Kavanaugh told her he stands on Roe versus Wade. He said that he agreed with what Justice Roberts said at his nomination hearing in which he said that it was settled law. Justices Samuel Alito and Neil Gorsuch used similar language when pressed on the issue during their hearings. Still, 
pro-life advocates hope the confirmation of Judge Kavanaugh would one day lead to a change. We pray that one day uh, the Supreme Court will recognize the, the dignity of the unborn. Despite the legal drama surrounding the president's former associates, Senate Republicans remain confident Judge Kavanaugh will be confirmed before the midterm elections. Reporting from Capitol Hill, Abigail Robertson, CBN News. The discovery that the University of Iowa student Molly Tibbet was killed by an illegal immigrant has once again brought the immigration debate back to the forefront. CBN's national security correspondent Eric Gonzalez brings us this look at the reactions to her tragic death. People across the country are again questioning our U.S. immigration laws after police charged an undocumented immigrant in the death of Molly Tibbetts. Here in Washington, D.C., members of Congress are feeling the heat after President Trump called it yet another example of our broken immigration system. You saw what happened to that incredible, beautiful young woman. Should have never happened illegally in our country. Iowa Senators Chuck Grassley and Joni Ernst released this statement. We are deeply saddened that this bright young woman's life was cut short. Our heart goes out to the family and friends of Molly Tibbetts. No family should ever have to endure such a tragedy, especially one that could have been prevented. Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds saying in part, as Iowans, we are heartbroken. We are angry that a broken immigration system allowed a predator like this to live in our community. And we will do all we can to bring justice to Molly's killer. Author and immigration advocate Matt Soren says now is not the time to convict millions of other immigrants and tie it to this tragic event. If illegal immigration was correlated with violent crime, we would expect that as the the number of immigrants present illegally in the country tripled from 1990 to 2013. We'd expect violent crime to increase dramatically as well. But if you look at FBI data, violent crime declined by about 48 percent um, during those years. White House spokeswoman Sarah Sanders offered prayers to the family and friends of Molly Tibbetts and says this is another example of our broken immigration laws. She also said the Bible in Psalm says the Lord heals the brokenhearted and binds our wounds. Eric Rosales, CBN News, Washington. Pro-family groups are upset about a blog by an American library group that promotes the, quote, Drag Queen Story Hour. The blogger writes, interested in bringing Drag Queen story time to your library? ALSC committee members receive tips for optimizing success from library pioneers who have already done it. ALSC is the Association for Library Service to Children, which is part of the American Library Association. A writer for the Illinois Family Institute expressed outrage over the promotion. CBN News has reported about the spread of the Drag Queen Story Hour. It's been advertised as an event that, quote, captures the imagination and play of childhood and gives kids glamorous, positive, and diverse role models. Coming up, President Trump's national security advisor traveled to Israel this week with a clear message. The United States is going to stick with its hard line against the regime in Iran. And he talked about the possibility and questions around a Middle East peace plan. We'll have that story when we come back. As we reported here at CBN News yesterday, U.S. Secu US National Security Advisor John Bolton spent three days in Israel this week. His central message, the Trump administration will enforce its tough line on Iran. That may not seem remarkable in Washington, but to, Israel, to Israelis, it is a breath of fresh air. Bolton spoke to reporters as he wrapped up his visit. Our Chris Mitchell brings us the story now from Jerusalem. Throughout his visit, Bolton stressed for Israelis that the U.S. will never allow Iran to get nuclear weapons. And he noted that the strict economic sanctions on Iran are generating real anti-government protests. And by bringing the hammer down again of reimposing American sanctions, uh, we've seen a profound negative effect uh, on Iran. I think actually more serious than uh, we would have predicted. Uh, and what's significant about the demonstrations and outpourings that you've seen across Iran is that, to the best of our knowledge, they're not organized. This is not a, some kind of conspiracy in Iran. It's just regular people saying they're fed up with the government. Bolton's four-day stay here was longer than most official visits. That's partly because the White House is preparing to lay the groundwork for the rollout of its Middle East peace plan. He made it clear that the U.S. will not impose its plan on either Israel or the Palestinians. But he's skeptical 
about whether Israel has a real peace partner. I can't even begin to count the number of ceasefires we've heard from Hamas, Hezbollah, other terrorist groups over the years. I would be stunned if anybody in the government of Israel uh, is viewing this with anything other than a uh, very, very clear-eyed understanding of what it's about. It's a sad uh, outcome for the Palestinian people that, uh, that all they've got now is a choice between Hamas and the Palestinian Authority. For Israelis, the fact that Bolton spent several days with the country's top leadership is a refreshing change of pace. Caroline Glick is chief columnist for the Jerusalem Post. What you're really seeing here is a, is a business-like atmosphere of two allies coming together and discussing common interests, which is something that we haven't seen in the past from U.S. administrations who were blind to the basic reality, which is that Israel is the United States' most powerful ally in the Middle East. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. Still ahead, a new book on the Bible and the Holy Land from someone who's familiar to television audience for, for years and years. I talked with Kathy Leah Gifford about her new book and what inspired her to write it. We're going to have that story right after this. Kathy Lee Gifford is an all-around entertainer, and now she has written and starred in a film alongside Craig Ferguson. But before that production began, I sat down with her to talk about her latest book about the Bible and the Holy Land. When I closed my eyes and held my very breath and let you love me to death. From the recording studio. That remains yeah. to be seen. I'm going to sing it later in the show. But to the television studio. <laughs> Kathy Lee Gifford is an all around entertainer with unmatched passion. Follow your joy, and it will lead to God's purpose for your life. And I have a mantra, which is my joy is non negotiable. <laughs> at the same time, the fierce army of the Philistines had been camped at the Valley of Ella for 40 days. Gifford is a gifted performer who is also passionate about her faith. You can see it in the pages of her latest bestseller, The Rock, The Road, and The Rabbi. What inspired you to want to tackle this? You've written best-selling books already. What inspired this? I've been going to Israel. I've been going to the Holy Land since I was 17 years old. I was a big Bible nerd from, from the time I became a Christian when I was 12 years old. <laughs> and uh, this was back in the 70s. And it was the first Jerusalem conference on biblical prophecy. Mm. And my father, as my, as my graduation gift from high school, get, got tickets for my mom and me to go to um, Israel and attend that. Mm. And I was thrilled. I mean, I missed my high school graduation. I could have cared less. I could have missed high school. I could have <laughs> wow. cared less. I always was anxious to get to the Holy Land and be where everything happened mm. and just um, soak it in. These are snapshots from one of her trips to the Holy Land with Rabbi Jason Sobel, who helped her to write the book. In 2012, my husband and I went on our, our first, what we call a rabbinical trip. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's when everything changed for me. And when I started really studying the way the Messianic rabbis mm -hmm. teach, mm -hmm. because the, the Word of God was written by Middle Easterners for Middle Easterners. Yeah. And when we try to apply our Western mindset or mm -hmm. traditions or, or thought process or, uh, towards that, it never works. Mm -hmm. we, we, we have to go back to who they were yeah. and what was happening at the time that it happened. And we have to understand what the languages truly meant. Most people think that Jesus was a carpenter. Well, not according to the, the Greek in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. The word for what Jesus and Joseph did was tekton, T-E-K-T-O-N. Yeah. And that means either builder or it means architect. Well, Jesus was the architect of all of creation, so that would make sense. And if I'm going to base my entire life on something, mm -hmm. I have to know what it really means. Many people call themselves Christians. They've never even read the Bible, much less know what it says. Kathy Lee aims to make the pages of the Bible come to life and encourage people to read it more. If you know Israel, there's like a three-mile circumference around the temple. Everything is about worship at the temple. Everything was about the spilling of blood for the atoning of sins in the temple. Those shepherds were Levitical priests, yeah. shepherds. Mm -hmm. And those, those, um, those lambs 
were born for the same reason that Jesus was in Bethlehem, right there, to be sacrificed for the sins <laughs> of, of the people. Mm -hmm. And what did they do? What did they do to the lambs as soon as they as soon as they were born? They wrapped them in swaddling clothes and laid them in mangers. This is a this is a kind of journey we go on in the rock, the road, and the rabbi. It is so, and I hope it ignites people's faith. We are so lukewarm, uh, so lukewarm in our mm. society today. Our battery is like on, I think on like you know critical mass or something, and because we're not understanding what the Word of God really says, mm -hmm. therefore we're not applying it properly to our in our own daily lives, Absolutely. and we're living half of our faith out because we're not living our Jewish part. Yeah. And I think you say it really profoundly when you're talking about how it came alive for your husband. Yes. Religion yes. versus relationship. I don't want religion in my life. <laughs> I don't want religion. I want relationship with the living God. Is there a favorite place for mm. you to visit since you've been so many times? If you were going and could go to one place, mm. what would you say go? Oh, it, that's an impossible question mm. to answer. I um, adore and Getty because so much of our life is, um, is in desert. So much of our life does involve suffering. Mm -hmm. And David suffered so, uh, think about it, as a, as a young man, probably 12 to 14 years old, he was anointed by, by uh, Samuel to be king. Yeah. When did he actually become king? When he was 30. 30. <laughs> 30. That's a long time to wait on God yeah. and half the time to be separated from his loved ones and his family and hiding in caves from King Saul who wanted to kill him. Here is also a reminder of God's provision, an oasis in the desert for all who believe. And Kathy Lee's book is available right now. It's actually back on the New York Times bestseller list. And I've got news for you. She's got another book coming out, that one for children. We're going to be sitting down with her to talk about that in just a matter of weeks. Still ahead, a spiritual awakening has been going on here in the U.S. at an army base in Missouri with nearly 2,000 troops coming to faith in Jesus Christ. We've got that story for you. It's coming up right after this. And welcome back to CBN News Watch. A spiritual awakening is taking place at a Missouri Army base as many troops have come to Christ. Chaplain Jose Rondon ministers at Fort Leonard Wood and says since March, more than 1,800 soldiers have come to faith in Jesus Christ. Chaplain Rondon posts videos on Facebook of soldiers singing songs and worshiping and being baptized. He credits the salvation to those prayers of those who've been interceding for a move of God in the military. And he encourages them, don't stop. Right now, it is time for your Thursday. Thankful it's a word I want to share with you. While every day is a day of gratitude, this is a perfect moment to remember and offer this prayer of gratitude with me. Father, thank you for opening doors that no man can shut in my life. But I also need to pause and say thank you for those doors that remain closed as well. With that word, I encourage you to make this a thankful Thursday and remember that God opens doors that no man can shut, but he also closes those that you don't need to enter. That is going to do it for this edition of CBN Newswatch. Remember, you can always find more of our exclusive coverage of the issues you care most about at CBNNews.com. And we would love to hear what you think about the stories you've seen here today. You can do that by emailing newswatch at CBN.com. And of course, you can always reach out and touch us on Facebook and Twitter, as well as Instagram. While this concludes this broadcast, remember the news continues 24-7 at CBNNews.com. We're updating that throughout the day for you. Hope you'll join us again right here next time. Make this a thankful Thursday and a wonderful rest of the week. Looking forward to seeing you right back here come tomorrow. Goodbye, everybody, and God bless.